Hola artistas, bienvenidos a Arte with Maestro William. Este, hoy vamos a estar leyendo un libro, este que se llama um, White Sox Only por Evelyn Coleman y las ilustraciones son por Tyrone Getter. Este, pero antes de leer este libro, um, que hacer nuestro poema, In la que a la Ken. Este, acuérdense, este poema es un poema, un verso maya, este, que nos recuerda que estamos interconectados. Y vamos a ver, esta historia va a ser muy importante hoy, este, que vamos a estar leyendo, pero uh, repitan después de mí, por favor. In la que tú eres mi otro yo. Si te hago daño a ti, me hago daño a mí misma. Si te amo y respeto, me amo y respeto yo. In la catch, a la can. Gracias, artistas. Pues, artistas, este libro, este se llama White Sox Only, este, um, habla del racismo, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, de cuando una persona, este, está maltratando a otra persona, y específicamente esta, este libro habla, este, de una era, Um, que se llama The Jim Crow Era, uh, era donde uh, había leyes este, en, en, en los Estados Unidos que separaba um, cosas que podían hacer a uh, los blancos con los afroamericanos este, o personas de color, ¿verdad? Porque yo, aunque no sea este, um, afroamericano, también estas leyes aplicaban para mí, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, pues vamos a estar este, leyendo esta historia y luego vamos a tener una conversación sobre el racismo y qué podemos hacer nosotros cuando este, veamos que alguien este, está siendo maltratado, maltratada, este, qué podemos decir, ¿verdad? Ok, pues que empezar, artistas. Otra vez, este libro se llama White Sox Only. Um, la autora se llama Evelyn Coleman. Y las ilustraciones son por, por Tyrone Gutter. Y así va la historia. <coughs> They said to my uh, brother Edward Eddie Joe Coleman, who believed in the magic of my stories, and to the children of the world, you are the future. Ustedes son el futuro. Y así va la historia. Grandma, can I walk into town by myself? I asked. One hot summer day. I knew she was going to say. I knew what she was going to say. She was going to tell a story. Not just any story, but my favorite story. I watched her turn her toward her spit can. Ping! The snuff juice hit the bottom, sounding like a chime. She rocked one or two times in her rocking chair. Her eyes closed, and then she looked up at me. You know you ain't big enough to walk into town alone, girl. I shall know why you ask me that. You aren't big enough, so you're going to do some good there. I smiled and plopped down on the step. She was about to begin the story. Grandma laughed. You know, when I was a little girl, like yourself, I sneaked into town once. Yep, all by myself. I wasn't planning on doing no good. Had just been waiting for a scorching hot day. I had two eggs hid in my pockets. Not to eat, mind you, but to see if what folks said was true. I slipped on my finest Sunday dress and my shiny black patent leather shoes and my clean white socks. I pulled my plates back with a bow. Why? I thought I looked pretty grown up. Lord, you should have seen me strutting. The dust flying behind me. I had to hold my arms steady on account of them eggs. Though, now that I think about it, I must have been mighty funny, a uh, funny sight. I sneaked on up that road of singing, jumping back Sally. Sally, Sally, whacking up, waking up the alley, 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 to nobody but myself. And child, was it hot. On that kind of day, a firecracker might light up by itself. 
I was feeling pretty fine until I spotted that old chicken man sitting on his porch with his mouth like a smile. I just looked down at the dirt. My mama had told me how the chicken man still did things he knowed all the way from Africa, stuff that his grandmother done taught him. Mama also had told me he could heal the sick by laying on his hands. And that one time he made a blind man, a blind man see just by looking deep into his eyes. And folks said he'd turn people into chickens if he didn't feel what they were doing was right. That's why he was called the chicken man. I was kind of scared he might think I wasn't doing right. So I started walking faster. I still held my arms out steady though, so I wouldn't break the eggs. Anyway, when I got to town, I didn't see many folk that I knew. I wandered around with my mouth gaped open, looking at the white women in their fancy hats. That's when I saw Mama's friend, Miss Nancy, turning the corner. <gasps> I was going to show enough be in trouble if she saw me. She told Mama everything, so I took off running towards the first big tree. I saw and hid behind it. I stayed there for a minute, panting, until I saw Miss Nancy walk out of sight. Then I tiptoed out. But in my rush, I burst one of my eggs, and it was slinking down my dress and legs. And she is hiding. I figured I'd better do what I come to do and get back home. I was standing in front of this big old building where there was a statue of a soldier sitting up on a horse. I read what it, was, it said on the building, Cole County Courthouse, Mississippi. I carefully pulled my egg out of my pocket right there. I cracked it one time against the horse's leg. There she is with the statues. And we see a lot of statues are being brought down all over the country. The eggs inside dropped to the hot cement. I knelt down with a face close. With my face close, I watched that egg like the old men watched the checkers before making a move. For a minute, I thought it wasn't going to do anything. Then right around the edges, I saw it. One little bit was turning white. Next, the white creeped wider and the yellow began to bubble. <gasps> By golly, I was frying an egg on the cement, just like folks said. I jumped up and started dancing and prancing. It was time to go home now. I've done it. It was all over, and it was true. I could, it could get so hot, you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. Have you ever heard that? That it's so hot outside that you can actually cook an egg on the sidewalk? I tried it. I have to admit, I tried it when I was little. It didn't work for me, though. I started walking and wiping sweat from my face with the eggy part of my dress sticking to me every time I took a step. My mouth was dry as dirt, and I was mighty thirsty. That's when I spotted the water fountain. It had a little step stool so children could climb up to drink, but on the fountain was a sign that read, Whites Only. Well, I knew what that meant, so I sat down in the grass and took off my shiny black patent leather shoes. Now I only had on my clean white socks. I stepped up on that stool with those white socks hugging my feet. I was slurping up that water mighty fast when this big white man with a black and white bandana around his neck grabbed me off the stool and pushed me to the ground. The white man pointed to the sign and yelled at me. Can't you read, girl? Why, I'm going to whoop you till, I can't, till you can't sit down. His big fingers fumbled and tugged at his belt. I began to cry as a crowd of white people gathered around. They were all start staring at me, seeing all the people made me real scared, and I cried louder. I couldn't understand what the white man was so mad about. I was wearing my white socks. Hmm. 
why do you think the white man was so upset? And what do you think that sign meant, whites only? An old black woman from my church stepped through the crowd. She wasn't wearing anything white, but she untied her shoes and took them off. She stepped up to the fountain, bent way, way down, and took a drink. I knew the man was going to yell at her, and he did. I'm going to have to whoop you too, ain't I? He shouted. And everyone in the background isn't saying anything. But then, other black folks started coming over, removing their shoes and drinking from the fountain. They had on clean-looking green socks and yellow socks and red socks and blue socks. Of course, the big man with a bandana kept right on yelling. His face got red as fire. He was snorting through his nose like a bull does when it's going to charge. Let's see how the artist painted the face of this white man uh, more red to show part of the story. Let's see what happens. Other white folk came up and started yelling at us too. By that time, the big man had whipped his belt out of his pants. He was hitting me and everybody else who was close. None of the black people moved. They just covered their faces. I sat there sobbing, holding my arms over my head. All of a sudden, everybody got quiet like they was gonna pray in church even the white people i peeped out through my arms the black people and the white people were moving aside the chicken man was coming through he was slowly tapping his way towards me and see in the background the white man uh is hitting the people when he got close he stopped he looked at me from the top of my head down to my white socks. Then he bent over and pulled off his black shoes, his face squeezing up. He had on the cleanest white socks you've ever seen. He stepped up on the stool. He didn't have to bend over very far because he was, he was so short. He drank a lot of a long time from that fountain. I held my breath. So did everyone else. The chicken man lifted his head. He turned around, smiling, and slowly stepped down on the stool. Without a word, he pointed a crooked finger at the white man. The white man's belt was down by his side now, clasped tightly in his fist. He was as still as a statue. The old chicken man helped me up. He took out a white handkerchief and wiped off my face. They're there now, child. It's time for you to go home. You did all right. He handed me a chicken feather out of the brim of his hat and hobbled away. All the black people surrounded me. They were all crying and hugging me. Then they took me home. When they told Mama what had happened, she just broke out laughing. She said, well, I guess you can go to town by yourself now. Because you're old enough to do some good. Oh, that's surprising. I thought she was going to get in trouble, but she didn't get in trouble. I wonder. I wonder what she meant by her mom saying that she, she did some good. Nobody ever again saw the big white man who had wiped, whipped us. None of us dared ask about the big chicken flapping around the courthouse near the water fountain. Neither. And from then on, the whites only sign was gone from that water fountain forever. En colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. Wow, artistas. Esa historia, it's a, it's a, it's a bit intense, ¿verdad? Este, entonces, este, pero les quería preguntar. Me da este todavía en este momento um, esto pasó um, pues es una una historia basada en lo que estaba pasando um, en la era de Jim Crow que que no es no ha sido a tanto tiempo verdad este yo diría como unos 60 60 70 años este entre 50 y 70 años verdad que que pasó había leyes que um, provo, 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 este pro, ¿cómo se dice? 
este que segregaba ¿verdad? a la gente, um, especialmente a los blancos y a los afroamericanos. Este, pero todavía hay muchas este, leyes ahorita que pues no se, se está, no se está segregando, ¿verdad? Y, y podemos ver en di, de, dependiendo en dónde vivas que muchas este, vecindarios, muchas comunidades todavía están segregadas. Este, y pues podemos ver que ahorita también muchas personas están peleando por los derechos este, de las vidas negras y están diciendo que las vidas negras importan, ¿verdad? Y es por todas estas historias, todas estas leyes que este, personas han, este, um, que personas han pasado y que han afectado a, los, a las comunidades este, afroamericanas. Pero te quiero decir, este, nosotros, así como yo, así como tú, tenemos una responsabilidad, ¿verdad? Tenemos una responsabilidad de, este, de asegurarnos que cuando veamos que alguien está siendo maltratado o maltratada, que, este, que digamos algo, ¿verdad? No podemos quedarnos silencios porque el, el, el no decir nada le estamos diciendo a esa persona que está maltratando que lo que está haciendo está bien. Y si pueden ver, ¿verdad? Este, así como uh, el personaje en esta historia, hubo otra gente que este, empezó a tomar de la, de la, del agua, ¿verdad? Este, aunque les estaban este, gritando. Y podemos ver ahorita que muchas personas también este, están tomando esas acciones, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos viendo a alguien que está haciendo algo que pensamos que a lo mejor va a ser malo, este, empezamos a tomar video, empezamos a decir, oye, ¿qué estás haciendo? ¿Por qué estás tratando a esta persona así? Este, estamos preguntando muchas preguntas para este, descalar esa situación, ¿verdad? Y, este, y pues yo como adulto, este, trato de hacerlo, pero también no porque yo sea adulto significa que todo lo que diga o todo lo que haga es correcto, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, así como niños, niñas y adultos, todos necesitamos ser responsables este, por uno al otro, pero también asegurarnos de cuando estemos viendo algo que no está apropiado, que no está tratando a la gente con igualdad, que digamos algo, ¿verdad? O que tratemos de también pararlo, este, nomás con que no te, no, no este, no este, um, uh, te lastimen, ¿verdad? Pero de ver, de definitivamente decir algo, ¿verdad? Pues, artistas, espero que les haya gustado esta historia. Esa es una de las primeras historias que cuando yo me hice maestro, estaba leyendo en, um, en tercer y cuarto grado, cuando estaba dando clases de arte, este, ya hace muchísimo tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, pero, este, me gustó compartir esta historia con ustedes. Espero que les haya gustado. Y, pues, otra vez, este, gracias por estar aquí conmigo. ¿Ok? Recuerden, artistas, all power to all people. Hasta la próxima.